You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Ryan, good day, sir. Good day. How are you doing? Uh, rough, man. It was rough. I'm um, doing okay. I could power through it. Uh, as you guys know, I, I can't thank you enough for all the messages you uh, you left me um, about my dog, Irv. Had to put my dog down. It was... Uh, look, one thing I'll say, I, I strongly recommend everybody, if they're ever going to put a dog down, their buddy, have someone come to the house and do it. Yeah. Instead of going to the vet or someplace that the dog doesn't like and he's uncomfortable and it's a cold table and it's leaving it. It was nice to have someone here. It was incredibly hard watching him go. Um, it was peaceful, but it was just like all of a sudden you got this pup that you've been with forever, and and then his head's kind of limp, and he just lies there, and he looks at you, and then they inject the stuff, and dude, <sighs> tears just come out of you. They just you just you're flooded. But I will tell you that uh, as much as social media can be a pain in the ass and annoying, uh, the messages. Uh, on Twitter and Instagram and the message board were just huge. My family, my friends, you guys stepped up, everybody stepped up and it just really shows you how much love there is in the world. So that, that helped me substantially, but uh, you know, I don't want to talk every episode about the dog, but uh, Irv is, uh, he's my best buddy. And um, you know, even like Blanche, my other dog, she, uh, the next morning I saw her laying on his spot where he passed. She never does that. And I, and I heard him a few times during the night. I don't know if I was hallucinating. <laughs> Maybe it was the edibles. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know the answer to that. But um, anyway, he has gone and he's with me. And uh, I love that dog. And I got so many nice, you know, celebrities also. You know, Henry Winkler gave a shout out. And oh. um, Kevin Conroy and my daddy, Johnny Glover from Smallville. And oh. Uh, love Hewitt and uh, Trish Helfer and just just everybody just poured it on and and it was it was a beautiful thing to see how many people cared and took the time to to message. So I will say that. Uh, so thank you everybody out there for doing that. All my lovable patrons who just are endless. They have endless love. They're a Lionel Richie song, Ryan. They're just <laughs> endless love. I want to announce Stage It, my band. You can see the shirt. Um, we are playing another Stage It April twenty fourth. It's a Saturday, the end of the month. Uh, this one's for Irv is the show and, uh, it's a 2 PM, 6 PM Pacific standard time show. We're doing two shows, 2 PM and 6 PM. We're going to play covers and originals and all that stuff. Uh, you can go to stage it.com and type in sunspin, get yourself a ticket. Uh, also go to sunspin.com, get yourself shirts, lunch boxes, hats, coasters, all that stuff. And if you want any inside of you merch, the inside of you store. Uh, inside online online inside of you online store there's a lot of great stuff there and uh smallville stuff and a bunch of really cool things uh guys really quickly um these guys aren't even a sponsor but i love them so much my good buddy mike borga he's introducing an 80 proof clear spirit made coconut nectar to the u.s it is amazing it's called lambinog like a mashup of lamborghini and eggnog they have been making this in the Philippines for 600 years, but Mike is bringing it to the U.S. now. It's distilled from the nectar of the coconut flower. Nothing else is added. You get a clear spirit and a bit of sweetness to smooth out any day. With a sip of Papo Jays, you get the brightness of intense sunshine. You get the earth and salt of coral and volcanic soil. And you get that salty sugar of the ocean from where it was made. Papo Jays Lambinog Vodka. Check it out, man. It's a little mom and pop company, and I'd like to see him do well. He's a good dude, and he gives me some free stuff. And um, yeah. Also, if you want to uh, subscribe to the podcast, or uh, you know, we can go to the handles. If you want to um, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, on Instagram it's at Inside of You Podcast, mm -hmm. at Inside of You Podcast on Instagram and Facebook, yep. and Twitter is at Inside of You Pod. It's right here. So please follow us, and if you want to subscribe, you go to Apple. Or you go to Spotify, mm -hmm. or please go to YouTube as well and subscribe to the show. Mm -hmm. Ryan? Inside of you with Michael Rosenbaum on YouTube. Yeah, please do that. Got a great show. I love having this guy on the podcast. This is the second time. He's completely open and fun, and uh, I miss him dearly. He was my father in Smallville. And I love him because he's not a pain in the ass. He doesn't, after the show, he just goes, okay, great. Was that okay? This guy just says whatever the fuck he wants and moves on. And I love those guests. Not that I don't love the other guests, too. <laughs> Not that they're listening to this episode, so fuck them. But uh, yeah, there's that. So um, without further ado, 
let's get inside of the one and only John Glover. It's my point of view. You're listening to Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum. Inside of You with Michael Rosenbaum was not recorded in front of a live studio audience. Look at your place. It's it's so nice. Have you never been here before? Well, I was at your one house when I had dinner with you. It was me and Allison and a couple of people years ago. But I think you may have moved because that looks way bigger. Yeah, this is, uh, this is big. That's great. Yeah, had a nice pool and I got the heater on. Do you, do you swim dipping. a lot? Do you skinny dip? Oh, God, yes. Well, if there are no kids. A lot of, uh, a friend of mine, um, I was a friend with Janet Margolin. Do, are you aware of who Janet Margolin was? No. Um, she did Cure Delay, uh, that little mo- that first movie that they did to, uh, together, uh, David and Lisa. And I did a movie with her called Last Embrace. And she used to go out with Woody Allen and da 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 da. da. Anyway, she died and she, had a, she was a good friend. We did, made a movie together and uh, got to be good friends. And she had a little boy named Julian. And uh, um, I guess he was uh, like 12 or 13 when she died. And he thought he maybe had killed her or something. It was his fault that she died. And, but, but right last March, when I was here, when all this was starting to grow, I was on the hike. And there was this sort of family of uh, a man and a woman and two little girls. And it was we cross. We all had our masks on. He said, are you John Glover? And I said, yeah. He said, oh, I'm Janet Markle and son. He was all grown up. What? So, so he started. I mean, we've become good friends now. Does he go skinny dipping with you? No, because he's got two girls. <laughs> well, you know, I'd skinny dip with you. Oh, no, I know you would. I and would. Byron, I when he comes over, he loves to take off all his clothes and jump. Wait, wait, who's this? Byron. Byron Burton. Byron. I, we know Byron. By, so your assistant, Byron, who's a friend of ours, he gets, he'll get naked? Oh, God, yeah. He doesn't so you care. come over someday. I think he's coming over this afternoon because he's got um, some stuff for me to sign from the last uh, virtual show we did. Right. So I think you that was that so, was a, the uh, Batman and Robin. Oh Batman. yeah, when you were on Smallville, that's how we all we we all met. You were right. always so fit, so ripped, so in just in tune, in touch with your body. You were always know, just looking. I amazed myself. Yeah, you really did. And I, ha- yeah, I'm not that way anymore. You don't work <laughs> out. You don't get ripped up anymore, or you don't care what happens. Well, I care, but I just am a bit lazy about, I mean, you know, my abs are kind of gone. I can, you know, I can suck it in and stuff. But there was a point where, where I started sitting in front of the TV set when I wasn't working, eat, eating whole packages of crackers. And I mean, there were some of the Comic Cons we did where my butt was so big and I had a belly. I looked at the pictures and I thought, oh, John, you're letting yourself go. You got to stop. Stop eating at night. I mean, how, how, what age do you just stop? It's not like you stop caring, but do you have to be one of those guys who just, ha, you know, is, he dies like in his 90s and he's just all in great shape and he just went, he died on a run? Or do you just kind of give up after a while and say, hey, I'm in my 70s, fuck it. I'm going to enjoy life. I'm not going to worry about staying in shape. I'm going to grow my beard out and not give a fuck. Well, I'm, I miss being a, um, um, a <laughs> it's harder to take my clothes off in front of people now because I, I got some little, uh, you know, love handles, some little, they go away. But, but, but the hike around this mountain, you know, when last year it was March 15th, when you saw it kind of had, it was a Saturday. Right. Because Adam and I were both here. And I thought, okay, at least two weeks we're going to be quarantined. So it'll be hard for me. And you, know, you thought after two weeks the bell was going to ring and we could go back to normal life, right? So I, but, but I was nine months alone in this house by myself. And I, I'm, I started to talk to myself and now I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> I'm bec- I've become this old person who talks to himself. What would you say? Anything. I would just narrate what I was doing and make jokes about it and laugh like somebody else was there that I was talking to, telling, right. telling my side of the story to and Did why you, I was yeah. doing. Did you talk to your psychiatrist and, about it? And he said that was normal. I think it is normal because I've spoken to a lot of other people who were uh, uh, kind of uh, all on their own, alone, yeah, in a home, 
I mean, nine months. I mean, I, I'm used to Adam being there all the time and talking to him, but there was nobody there. So I just talked. Did he think I you were losing it? I narrated it? my life to myself. Did he? Was he worried I, about you? Clever, too. But I was did it? different accents and everything. And <laughs> I, I want to hear a conversation you might have had. I just I, well, I'm walking to the front door. I mean, I mean, there's the stuff that that my what was in my grandmother's house when I was a little boy. So I, here, I mean, I could, I mean, if we were up in the guest room, I would show you this little Pied Piper, and there's a picture somewhere of me the same size as he is. So all these things are 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 in this house that I bought uh, with Adam. Uh, not so long. Uh, I don't even know how long ago it was. Maybe 15 years or so. I don't know. But I thought. This would be a great house to die in. It's all on one level. It's spanning. We put a pool in the back and, and there's a guest house. And um, and then Adam said, no, no, no we got to sell the house. So I'd walk around the house weeping because I thought I, I can't get rid of this stuff. I mean, it's stuff, but it's stuff that's been with me all my life that I know. So it's become this, this sort of museum of me, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> There are all these things that I, and, and then there's stacks of stuff everywhere because we collect. So anyway, I was here on my own so I could make my piles and everything. <laughs> well, I talk to myself. I think you probably know that. It doesn't shock you. Yeah, but I, I yeah, okay. I, I will, I'll question myself more like, why are you doing this? Why are Allowed. you? Yeah, why are you yeah. doing this? Why are you thinking like this? Why, are, why these thoughts? These aren't, these aren't real. Do you well, they do feel different real. accents? Well, I don't know if I've done accents. You know, I, I think <laughs> when there's people over the house or if I have like a just someone around, I feel more compelled to, you know, turn it on a bit. I'll be like, oh, you know, oh, lovely. Yeah. Look, and I'll grab a little trinket or a little, uh, little, per, yeah. like a little doll or, like, oh, looky, yeah. look. And I'll just put yeah. on a show. But that's kind of me. I'm, you know, I, I need to always yeah. feel like I have to put on you a see, show. I do, I do that without an audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's all right. So then it sort of turns crazy. And like an old guy who's 76 years old. But I let the, this is a year now, this this stuff. Wow. Because I stopped uh, I stopped shaving or cutting anything on March 15th last year. Do you think you'll ever shave it? Yeah. You do. You think you'll you'll go back I'm, to clean John? You see, I did this for that jo job that I did. Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead? Fear the Walking Dead, yeah. And how many so episodes did you do? Four. I had a four-episode arc. My God, my God. I'm sworn to secrecy. I can't talk about it. But I thought, I mean, I got the job before all this happened. So, so David Letterman, my agent, called and said, they're still probably going to do it, but we've got to find out when it's going to be safe enough. So they started up again in October. Uh, so I was from March 15th till October or something or other. Are you done it. filming? Yeah, I finished uh, a couple of weeks ago. How was it? It was fun. They're very, oh, they were very generous and so welcoming and uh, really wonderful people. They made me feel happy to be there. I, the, the problem I had was when, because the, the Walking Dead, I'd never watched the show before. I mean, I'd heard about it. But it was the violence because they'd have to to kill him forever. They'd have to uh, like uh, stick him in the head with a, a knife or something. Right. So so one of the first things I had to do was to poke a guy in the eye and <laughs> kill him forever. And it was this big stunt man that was laying there on the floor, and I they give me this sort of rubberish knife, and I, I I mean they were very generous about helping me and the cameraman said it's a little awkward you grabbing it maybe I, and he said well we can get somebody just to hand it to you so it'll be there but it was the how you stick it in right. and then they do the rest of it in post but it was um and you can't talk the, about this was, you're not allowed to talk about it. it hasn't aired yet no no i'm sworn to secrecy about who i am and everything but i just let everything grow and then when it happened i i sent them some pictures of myself the way i looked and they went yes like that and they got very excited do you which find, made me feel good do you find yeah. it more difficult the older you get maybe this is a stupid question to remember lines to act, just acting in general to it's, it's my fear the confidence you know, cuz I, I lose a word or something an important word i can't i can't remember it or, or something will go blank. I mean, it used. I mean, I remember when I was in my twenties or early thirties, learning a script over the weekend so I could replace somebody. 
uh, and I and I just went blind, page by page by page, put it in my head. Never had to go over it again. I just knew it, and and, and I I have trouble uh, keeping the lines in my head now. Yeah, and 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 as soon as I start, I think, okay, you can do this, you can do this, but there's that that thing of, am I going to humiliate myself? Because it is. It's humiliating for me because I used to be able to just read it and know it like you do, or like you used to. I, like I used to. It's yeah. harder now, though, isn't it? It's, How it's, old are you now? I'll, be, I'll be 49 in July. Yeah. It is hard. It's always been, for me, I've had to go over it and over it and over it and over it and over it just so I have really? the confidence to be. Because I used to watch you on the airplane on the way back on the weekends, you know, when you went. We'd race for the, the seat. We'd we'll get the upfront seats. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember you'd start learning them then. And I would, I would kind of wait and. Yeah, I think my fear is that I don't want to. I want to be so prepared that I just want the lines to be second nature. That I feel like I, if yeah. I, if well, I. That's I, how I tried to get them too. But it, but, but the first episode that I did, uh, I thought I could do it better than I thought. So I, 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 I the next script. I had to spend much more time and start immediately as I got it, just to start sticking it in my head. Because a, a, a four-week rehearsal doing a play will get it there, I've found. You know, it's it's harder. I mean, I used to be able just to know it like on day one or two or something. I, I there were times when I don't even remember having to sit down and learn the lines. They just I did it enough that I just knew it. Do you still want to do plays? Do you still want yes. to? Yes. Oh my God. There, that's the easy part because you do have that rehearsal, which which lets it get in there, because there's there's something about starting with with, with you think, am I going to make it through this big speech? It, 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 it's as soon as that little thing of am I, it's like a flinch happens, and you think, and, and you tense up. We had a great script script supervisor, Marjorie. <laughs> And I'd work and I'd work and I'd fuck it up and fuck it up and come back. And then about the, like the third or fourth take, it would just go. And she'd come over and I'd been through such agony. And she said, or you can do it like that every time if you want. <laughs> <laughs> she had such a good humor about it. Cause and, I, she understood, I think. And that was on uh, Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah. 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 It, I mean, it was, I, I felt alive again. Cause I thought, God, what's going to happen? Are we going to ever work again? But right. but the the kind of weird part about it was that everybody's masked. Everybody that makes me nervous. The actors yeah. rehearse masked, and so you can't really you know see what everybody's doing because you can't see their all you can see are their eyes and not hear them real well because they're a little muffled. And I'm also getting I think a little it maybe got the wax too much wax in my ears i don't know <laughs> and after lunch once i thought we were moving on to another scene and we redid the whole scene that we'd done all morning and i i, I just i i like went haywire and thought i can't do it i know it's already gone from my head so i, I made it terrible so i i'm learning through through each time but i i, I it felt so good to be back at work because I thought, when is this going to happen again? And the theater stuff is even, I mean, that's going to be take longer. Right. Oh, and then they go, final touch-ups. So all the actors take their masks off. And everybody else is masked. <laughs> and you're just feeling naked and like, okay, if I stand here, got a half an hour, maybe 15 minutes if somebody, but, but we got tested four times a week. And before I would take the airplane to get to Austin, they would send somebody to my front door to test me there. And then I, as soon as I get off in Austin, the next day, they sent me to do the, you know, the, the deep, the deep nose test first, right? which I learned how to take. The first guy uh, that came to my house here was, he had a, a name that sounded like I conjured up an older kind of Jewish guy that appearing. Well, like a six foot two Latino man who was just like, like David or something appeared at my door. And he said, I'm going to go deep. But what I want you to do is to breathe very slowly through your nose. So as he, I mean, it was almost like, 
It didn't hurt at all. And he went deep, too. And I'm sure so you made I a smart-ass comment. I asked him if he wanted to go for a swim in the pool. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I was waiting for it. But he said, he said, no, I've got some other people to test. I said, well, I'll be here all weekend if you're free. Inside of You is brought to you by Geico. Uh, everybody knows what Geico is. And if you don't, you should. Uh, they make uh, your bundling policies easier. They make life easier on you, uh, whether you rent or you own a home, mortgage, rent. It's always the hardest thing to do, but then you have to send a payment here. You have to send a payment to your auto. You don't have to do that with GEICO. Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or your renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing because we already have too much going on. Just go to GEICO. It's so easy. Go to Geico.com. Get a quote. See how much you could save. It's Geico easy, folks. Visit Geico.com today. That's Geico.com. Even a Rosenbaum can do it. Even a Rosenbaum can do it. Inside of You is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp Online Therapy. Uh, one of my favorites. I love talking about this sponsor because it's so easy for me to talk about. Someone who gets therapy, someone who goes to therapy, somebody who tells other people to go to therapy because I see how it works. I see people improving. I see people who have all these things bottled up in their lives and they just bottle them up, bottle them up. And what happens? It's called explosion. And you don't want that explosion. You want uh, you want to get these things out healthy ways, natural ways. And you know, therapy. People ask me what therapy is, and therapy is anything you want therapy to be. It's getting tools, getting the tools to help you with motivation, depression, anxiety, anger issues, all these things that come into play in life, in your lifetime, relationships at work. It's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve. To be happy. BetterHelp is a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. I like to see my therapist. I FaceTime everybody, but you don't have to. If you don't want to talk to them, you don't have to on FaceTime or whatever. And, you know, the great thing about BetterHelp is it's so much more affordable. I've talked about this ad nauseum, but guys, you're not going to get a better deal for therapy. If you want to get yourself into therapy, this is the way to start it. Um, the therapists that I see are just, the prices are exorbitant. <laughs> I just wanted to fit in that word. <laughs> and by the way, you'll have your therapist in under 48 hours, which is fantastic. So if you really are ready for a therapist, now's the time to do it. Join the millions of people who are seeing what therapy is really about. It may or may not be for you, but it's worth looking into because you, you are your greatest asset. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and inside of you listeners, you guys get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash inside. That's BetterHelp.com slash inside. Get some therapy. You have such a body of work. I mean, you won two Tonys. You've been nominated for Emmys. You've you know, we were on small together. You did Gremlins. You did Scrooge. You did uh, Annie, uh, not Annie, Annie Hall. You did Annie, Annie Hall, right? You were in Annie Hall. You did. I was in Annie Hall. Julia. Just, I mean, just tons of work. What it, What it, do you remember most fondly? Like, what is that piece of work that you always say, this was, whether it was big or small, this is what I want people to remember me by? Or this well, is. I, I got a lot of them that I'm proud of. But, but one of the most fun jobs I had was at one hiatus from Smallville, um, I had, and I had to fly to New York to audition for this. There, there's a show called The Drowsy Chaperone, a musical. Yep. And the guy that wrote it, who was playing the man in the chair, who had no songs, except right at the end, there was a little thing he did he, did he sing. But it was a musical, and I've always wanted to be in a musical, but because I don't sing on key, they don't cast me in musicals, because I flinch and... And, and so miserable if I have to sing a song. But I was on stage through the whole show and sort of created it. And I had the best time because I was on the musical stage. And, and, and the little song I had to sing, I would forever start on the wrong key. So you could hear this piano down in the pit going, doing, doing, here's your note. But I usually couldn't find it. But it didn't matter. I was having such a good time. You like to have fun when you work. Sure. Like what, what we did together. 
I mean, at first I wanted to strangle you. I yes. thought, this guy is a pain in the butt. <laughs> and then I realized that you were just being Lex. And so you were just, well, I think you were doing this on purpose to sort of get me pissed off because the scene would work better when I was. Now I started, remember, uh, there's a woman who's a, who's a, um, on the CNN now, Brooke Baldwin, I think is her, yep. her name, who did, who, who I guess was just starting out, but she was at one of those Warner Brothers things interviewing us all. And she wanted to, she Brooke asked Burke, me, I think. Brooke, yeah. Brooke, well, anyway, she's a CNN girl now and she's really smart and everything. But her question was, who on the show do you really not get along with? And I, and I, I said, I don't, I, I finally walked away and said, I don't want to answer that question. But you came right to mind because you kept, you kept fucking around all the time. And then I started getting into it because it was, uh, it was uh, Lex. How early was this in the show? Well, it went away pretty early, but it was just before I understood. Well, it's, Cause you, yeah. Because well, I was only in the pilot. And then they just called me back for a few times that first, that first time. So I wasn't sure of myself i mean i wasn't i didn't know who lionel luther was yet i was you know trying to figure that out well i didn't think you liked me i told you this many times i I remember in the pilot that was just like the first couple of times i was it took a minute but by the time we started fencing by the time we started there there was there was good there was a time when we then all of a sudden we realized we're really good together yeah you know when we realized people are liking our what we're doing it's working there was a certain. Well, as soon as you showed me your balls, that's when I knew I could trust. What you. season did I show you my balls? So many. Was it season two? <laughs> I don't know. If, now you hang on. You don't, show, you don't show on the first season. Hang on, right? but we're that's look, like the girls. I... We're, <laughs> we're in a trailer. We're running lines or something. I'm probably in my underwear and like John's. No, part. no, you're hanging out of your trailer, sort of going like that and shaking them. Well, that's when you could like do ding that. Ding dong, the witch is ding dead. Ding dong, witch the witch is dead. The witch is dead. My balls are here. Bong, um, bong. But they're great bong, balls, though. Great, great balls anyone. of fire. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Who is the who is the biggest celebrity you've ever met that you got uh, starstruck? That uh, I remember you telling me you met Barbara Streisand and she wasn't very nice. No, I just didn't know what to say. And I knew she liked uh, uh, Aegon Sheila, that artist, Aegon Sheila. Who, who I patterned a whole character looking after. Um, so she was at a party at the, the, the those songwriters that wrote a lot, lot of her songs, the, the uh, Marilyn and whatever, whatever their names are. I don't know. They were there. I was there with Michael Feinstein. Right. And Barbara Streisand was there with uh, the director who did What's Up, Doc, who wrote the book. Right. It used to be with Sybil Shepherd. Anyway, so I just sort of stood there uh, listening to her talk, she said, she looked at Michael Feinstein and she said, are you the, uh, like that? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah. So, but right when it was sort of time, getting time to close, I said, uh, I, I know that you have uh, some Egon Sheila's, where do you keep them? This is a really strange question. And she got really defensive and said, why? And I, and I said, well, I mean, why I said, I said, because he's a favorite artist of mine. And, and when I heard that you, you, you had some, I wondered if, if like they were in a room or in a hallway, if it, they were in a room where you could see them a lot of the time or a hallway where you just could pass by them. So that's. And what'd she say? I don't remember. <laughs> she didn't want to talk. She probably, well, listen, but, if, but at least I talked to her once. That's true. Uh, I talked to her once too. I talked but, to her once. But more importantly was the time that I lit Betty Davis's cigarette. Tell me about that. Well, I was at Roddy McDowell's and he had, I mean, he would have these parties where people were over. I think this was, I don't know if this was a Thanksgiving or not, but I remember uh, Elizabeth Taylor was there. Um, 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 uh, Mer- uh, Meryl the, Streep? The, the, the guy who did the House of Wax. Vincent Price. Vincent Price was there with his Ooh. wife, uh, Betty Davis, Elizabeth Taylor. Because I remember uh, for desserts, there were different kind of uh, cakes, which Liz Taylor was going crazy over. And, uh, and uh, Betty Davis sort of hobbled into the room. Uh, this was after the dinner. And, and, and uh, Betty, uh, uh, um, 
Liz Taylor said something like, Betty, oh, come on, look at all the cakes. And, and somebody said something funny that Betty Davis didn't like, and she hobbled away. And Vincent Price saw her and said, oh, Betty, look at you. You we thought you were so skinny, but you got a little belly. And then she really got angrier and walked off. But it was, <laughs> it was, it was quite a party, that. You mingled with some of the greats. Yeah, yeah. But Jackie Collins once uh, called me an asshole. Well, was she right? Yeah, I know. I I was at dinner at the Bearwalds, and Roddy was there. Maybe um, Lee Remick. I got to be really good friends with Lee Remick. I loved Lee Remick from The Omen. We did, we did this miniseries together, and I, you know, I'd done a movie. I worked with Jane Fonda, and I'd worked with Anne Margaret, and and there was always sort of a wall up. But with uh, Lee, she just was Lee. She, I remember I, I kind of got a lot of this hair off and it was like a crew cut. And, uh, and she walked into the, I walked into the trailer where she was getting a makeup test or something. And I said, it is real ticklish. And she, she came up to me and she said, well, tickle my belly with that. <laughs> <laughs> and from then I just knew I was in. I mean, I, I, we, we played these best friends. I was like this slob and she was, getting her son to murder her father. It was a great miniseries. I love that. You yeah. said on the last podcast that you slept with Freddie Mercury. No, I didn't say that. Did you not sleep with Freddie Mercury? <laughs> Somebody, I did a show with, with a Mark Blum. God bless his soul. He was one of the first people I knew to, to die of the virus. Um, but he came in the first day of uh, rehearsal, and he said, I heard you uh, slept with uh, Freddie Mercury and the Hall and Oats guy. I said, where did you hear that? He said, I read it on Wikipedia. <laughs> for my podcast. The sun, the sun, they got it from your podcast and somebody put it on Wikipedia. Well, the little one from Hall and Oats, we know that's true. Uh, John Oates, you had sex with, but we don't know about Freddie. So Freddie, Mer Freddie Krueger, Freddie Mercury's not, <laughs> Freddie Mercury you didn't sleep with. I think I did, Mike. <laughs> I, I mean, think, uh, and that I was, think that was him. I mean, was he, he nice? That mouth. Did... When I saw that mouth on the thing, I said, "Oh, I know that guy." Now, did you I mean, do you remember we him being nice? Out of a club. What do you remember him being nice and kind? It was yeah, fun. Yeah, very nice. Oh yeah. You guys hook up. You go your separate yeah. ways. Nobody gives a shit. Right. And is that what happened? You just kind of had a, a fling. Yeah. Look, the club was letting out. It was like two or whatever in the morning. I had been making a movie in Munich and I had some time off and I went to Berlin and I realized I couldn't understand anybody still there. So I went to London where I knew some people. So, so I, I was, and then I went back to Berlin. Do you Not remember, that same night, do you remember a conversation you had with Freddie that night? Maybe anything? <laughs> Bless you. You just remember having sex and you don't remember talking like, I'm writing this song, Bohemian Rhapsody. Nothing. Nothing comes to mind. <laughs> no. No. I don't think what we did came up. You know, our, our, uh, we were just two people who were attracted to each other and wanted to uh, touch. And that was it. And the next morning you left, he left. That was it. Got done. I never saw him again. I didn't get his number or anything. Well, did he just say, well, nice meeting you? I, you know, it was a long, long time ago. I don't remember. Well, what about uh, John Oates? Uh, what about him? He's very talented. They had a lot of my favorite songs on. I love the songs. He didn't do any singing, though, <laughs> that time. <laughs> what was your, what's your favorite Hall & Oates song? Well, they had so many good, big, big hits. Oh, they had so many hits. Man so Eater. Many. Adult education, uh, yeah, they had a lot of great songs. A man eater, man eater, yes. That well, there you go. So, were you like one of those guys? I mean, you were sought after, especially back in the day. Like when you went to a party, people knew who you were. They're like, "Oh, that's John Glover." Did you feel that? Like people knew who you were? No, you didn't. No, I don't know. I sort of have to. I, I felt that they wouldn't remember who I, that I'd met them or something. I always feel like that way too. I think that's some kind of insecurity we have. Yeah. Well, insecurity is useful. <laughs> you don't want to get too cocky, you know? We're, yeah. It's like, it's like when, 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 have you been uh, incubated, uh, vaccinated? Not yet. Okay. Well, I, I got it. 
the place downstairs from us is a, is a place where they have uh, the shots. So I uh, can never remember the name of it, but in New York. So I would go there every morning because I was of age. I was 70, I was 76, so I could get it. This is when they were, had to be over 75. But I went in every morning and, um, and I was getting ready to fly back to Austin. And, you know, there was all the stuff about the airplanes, uh, being on the airplanes and the airports and the people. So I'd give her morning. And the one guy, this beautiful black man named Justice, who we become friends, but he said, why are you so angry? And I stopped for a minute and I said, no, I don't mean to be angry. If you thought I was angry, I apologize, but I'm frightened because I'm going to go on an airplane soon. And I'm the, 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 their variant changes now. And <laughs> so I, I need a, a vaccination to feel safe. And one, uh, and finally one morning or one afternoon around two o'clock, the phone rang and it was downstairs. And they said, can you come now? We've got a cancellation. I said, give me five minutes. I'll put my pants on and be right there. So I went down and got my first and then I went off to Austin and I came back and four weeks later, because I hadn't gone back yet, I got my booster and I didn't have, I didn't have trouble with my booster. But what I'm also saying is since I've gotten my full vaccination, I've become even more careful with the mask wearing and the distancing. I don't know why, but I just am. That's that's important. weird that you're so, vaccinated. You, you you feel like you're you know in, in, you're not. I industry. just don't, I don't want to get cocky about it. Well, not only that because you could get you could carry it and give it to somebody else. Yes, exactly. So I'm urging everybody who's watching this to listen to to be helpful to your fellow man. Yes. My ear, ear, earplugs keep. I think I must have too much wax in my ears. They hey, won't stay in. Hey Johnny, what do you have left to do? Like, look, you're not old. You're 76. You're not old. But like, you know, do you want to keep working till you you, you die? Yeah, yeah. I want to go with my boots on. Actually, I saw John Glover die on stage, but I want to play Prospero. Um, and then I there was this uh, reading that they did uh, a year or so ago. Uh, where they got playwrights, American playwrights, to sort of do translations of Shakespearean plays. Uh, there was some guy from uh, Oregon who had a lot of money, and he loved to go to the theater, but he couldn't understand the Shakespeare language, so he paid a lot of money to get these playwrights. And I did a Lear one. A friend of mine who I knew from when he was in college, when I used to go back and, and help them out and tell them what it's really like to be in the theater, uh, I said, John, do the Lear for us. So I thought, Lear, I could never do Lear. But I worked on it. I mean, it wasn't Shakespeare's language, but I worked on it and felt, I, I think I understand enough that I could attack that. But, the, but I want to do The Tempest. I want to play Prospero before I go. You want to die on stage. You really think that would be cool? Well, it would be easier for me because there'd be time to rehearse it. <laughs> I mean... To, <laughs> <laughs> She'll put the words in my head, and I'm frightened of of the line things now. It's and they even offered me in um, in Austin. They said, "Yo, no, no, you, if you, you we can do big poster boards so you could read it, or we could put a a, a wig. Is they call it a wig? A, a wig? In your yeah, ear? a wig. A wig or whatever. Yeah, they put a thing wig. in your ear and you sort of talk. And I." And that makes me frightened because it's going to, I re, was, was uh, De Niro and um, um, Marlon Brando and um, Brando wore one. And they all were doing it with the, with being fed the lines, but they all got them mixed up because they couldn't, they were sending the wrong lines to the wrong person and everything. It said it was a mess. But, I, but I know that Richard Easton, who was a wonderful actor who had a, a kind of a stroke and, and couldn't learn lines. And Jack O'Brien was a good, good friend of his who, who, who taught him how to, to use it so he, could, so he could do this play. This is all I know how to do is act. I mean, that's, that's what I do. I never had to wait table. I never, I've been so lucky about getting uh, jobs. Yeah, you've always worked. And you've always gotten the lines out. Remember, when you're doing uh, 
film or a TV show, they could you could take as many takes as you want. They cut around it. We've had guest stars who can't get one line and they look better than us after they edit it. It's, it's my pride. I have to get over the pride thing and think, okay, am I worth it? That I'm going to take a little longer than than I used to to yeah to you know to get a take that is. I I was thinking and, of that. And, and some and some actors. I remember I was doing a, one of those um um. um uh, lawyer shows and there was this one young actor who had a big long speech and he I mean he'd go up and then he'd start again and just it, he'd know that they were going to be able to cut it together by him doing it but I always because I guess I grew up on the stage if I you know if I go up in the middle of a line it, it's like oh my god I have to start over again <laughs> I like, know what is that about us I mean some actors I've seen them mis mess up over and over and they're fine yeah, with it yeah. And, and then where going, I mess yeah. up one line and I'm all of a sudden I'm getting nervous and I'm getting upset and I'm like, I'm, getting, I'm, I just I want to be perfect. Too. It's, I think it's, we're striving for perfection and if, yeah. it would be so nice to just let it go to say, feed me the line. Let me just get that line out or yeah. to just, you know, wear an earwig. And, uh, you know, I hear like, you know, I've heard many stories, Robert Downey Jr. He wears it on all his movies. He wears an earwig in every movie, you know, and he sounds great. He sounds so, in fact, if someone's feeding you the line, I've talked about this in other episodes. If they're feeding you the line, John, and you hear it in your ear like you're going, I don't ever want to talk to you again. You're right on top. I'm like, I don't ever want to talk to you again. It's almost like it's coming out naturally. It's more natural than perhaps saying the line uh, as you normally would. Well, if I ever get a job again, I should try it out. Inside of You is brought to you by, in no small part, thanks to our lovely supporters over on Patreon. Folks, if you enjoy the podcast, you love talking episodes, you want to stay involved with the Inside of You community, I highly suggest you check out what's uh, going on and what we're doing over at the uh, patreon.com slash inside Patreon. It's uh, quickly turned into one of the coolest things I've been a part of, uh, certainly over the last year or so. I just, it's become a family. Uh, I enjoy it. Uh, we do little side things like YouTube. Uh, um, I play music. It's like a request line and we all comment and do things. It's, you just, you got to be there. If you want to get early access to episode content, check out the Patreon. If you want to interact with other fans of the show, check out the Patreon. If you want to get exclusive access to have your questions asked during the show to guests, check out the Patreon. Heck, look, if you just love what we do and want to keep this train rolling, check out the Patreon. It doesn't take much to get involved, and I'm there all the time chatting with folks and putting together live hangouts. I literally would not be able to do this without you guys, without Patreon. Um, so thank you. To get more involved in the community today, head over to patreon.com slash inside of you. That's patreon.com slash inside of you. And I will see you there very soon. Hey, this is called Shit Talking with John Glover. These are people who are going to ask questions from you from my, they're patrons of mine. I have a thing called oh. Patreon and they're going to ask you a question. This is from Claudine N. We've heard lots of stories from the set of Smallville, but is there one that hasn't been told yet that you can share? The naughtier, the better. And please don't include me, John. Well, there was the, the peach one. Remember the peach one? I think I was on a massage table covered by a towel. Mm -hmm. And I just kept wanting you to look down to my crotch and sort of <laughs> render it huge. So, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't remember. You put a peach under the towel? No, 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 no. I was eating a peach. It was a very sensual scene. Oh. I, I had a, they had a you know a woman masseur. I do me. remember this. It was very uncomfortable yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I did a thing where I got up and sort of opened my towel and everything, and I and I just said, Michael, just when you you, you when I open it like that, just glance down and and give me a look of amazement or something. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you had like underneath it. Didn't you have like those little, those underwear, those, uh, they made you Probably. those little underwears. Yeah. I do I, remember it, that. I did a shower scene too. I was where there. I was with these stunt men in the, in the shower. And I, I must've. Was it prison? Were you in prison at the time? Must've been. Yeah. They sent somebody to, to, uh, to stab me. Oh. Yeah, to kill me in the shower. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> oh, the prison days. Hey, Brian H. Brian H. says, what role you've played do you think comes closest to you in real life? Oh, well, I always use me. So there are always sort of parts of me. 
Um, but which part? Like, obviously, you weren't Lionel Luther. You're not this. No, but I, when I when I played those two uh, twins and and Terrence's Terrence McNally's play Love, Valor, Compassion, I mean they, I, I mean I used both sides of me, one who was loving and one who was paranoid, because I I do both very well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. Um, Emily asks, "What's your favorite thing about being on Fear of the Walking Dead?" Working, working in a really interesting role that's got a lot of twists and turns and surprises in it, and and I could use myself. Who was your favorite so, actor uh, on the show that you worked with? Are you allowed to say that? Maybe not allowed to say that. Why not? Well, you could say it. Who's your favorite person on set that was there that you really enjoyed? Oh, Jenna Elfman. Well, although I mean, I wanted to work with her for a long time. Basically. She shot a gun out of my hand. So we didn't really get to work, work together, <laughs> but, but I was close. But she and, was fun. Uh, and Keith Carradine. Uh, Carly H. Scrooge is one of my ultimate favorite Christmas movies. And Bryce uh-huh. is such an amazing, slimy, yuppie baddie. What is your <laughs> favorite memory from the shoot? And how does it feel to be a part of so many people's holiday season? I had a great time. And Bill Murray was so much fun to work with. And what there was so, something I can't remember. But he, there, there was some. I had to. It was we shot it at Paramount, and there was one. There was one set that was two sound stages that were put together, and I had to walk him across to an elevator and walk him on it. And and he said, "Well, I'd lit something," and I couldn't think of anything. And 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 all through lunch, I kept thinking, "What can I say? What can I say?" And uh, and I came back and said something that was sort of. He said, "Ah, oh, it's so ordinary." He said, what about that? And I can't remember what it was, but I knew it was really good. And I walked him all the way across, really silent. And just as the, uh, the elevator door was starting to close, I said the line. And it was a, like a devastating line. It was sort of meant his failure. And it he just sort of went like that. And they kept it? That was what was in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a, a line that he gave you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was yeah, he very yeah. giving? Was he playful on set? Was he fun? Yeah, yeah, but like you are, because he's weird, and the character <laughs> he plays was weird. So he, I mean, he's very similar to you. Really, so acting style wise, yeah. So what do you mean he gets when when the camera rolls, he's in it, and then when it's off, he's just like himself? No, about he's because he uses when he's on camera to sort of make it kind of go like that. Veronica K. What do you look forward to doing most now that it looks like we're nearing the end of the lockdown? We see the light at the end of the tunnel. What do you look forward to doing most? A play with a live audience sitting out there laughing there or weeping or doing whatever, but, but being in a play. Uh, I just course. love the theater, the theater. Leanne P., who are your some of your personal heroes? Adam Arkin became a good friend of mine. Really? Yeah, yeah, and I... I He's a really good, good, generous guy. Yeah, he's helped me a lot. Yeah. You know, Welling's been on the podcast a few times, and he just admires you. Every time we're anywhere at a con or whatever, he always talks about what a great actor you are, what a great man you are, and what a great role model, just a, a mentor. Yeah. You know, the the last uh, time, you know, I, 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 I kind of crashed. You, 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 you got you to do this sort of thing. Smallville Nights, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the first time I did it, it was a lot of fun. And then I did it a second time, and I stayed at the dinner table drinking too much red wine. Oh, yeah, you were drunk. <laughs> and, I, and I felt I made a, a fool of myself, and I just want to apologize. No, no, I, no, no, no. Look, here's the reality. You had a few drinks. You're having fun. People knew. They're like, oh, t- John, he, he had a little fun. He got a little lit. No, but we, I handled it. We handled it. It was fine. Yes, you, you did. But I, but I was not happy with myself. So I just, in public, want to apologize to both of you. Well, we, you don't have to apologize yeah. to us, but we, we love you regardless. But uh, <laughs> do, do you, do you, are you super hard on yourself? Like, do you always stress about, like, when you film something afterwards, you're, like, recreating the moments and the scenes? Do you still do that? Oh, oh Sure. Yeah, I can tear myself apart by the time I get home. Yeah, think like, oh, what did I do? How oh do you God. shut it off? How do you just let it go? You think at your age by now, 
You would be able to <laughs> think, right? Well, because you know, it, I'm asking this because I want to have some kind of semblance of hope that when I maybe I turn 60s, 70s, I'll stop giving a shit. But you don't stop giving a shit. Right. But sometimes I get uh, overly uh, paranoid. I, I have a tendency to, uh, for paranoia. I think it came from hiding so long, from hiding about who I really am. Your sexuality. Huh? Your sexuality. Your sexuality, yeah. Yeah, I had to, I, I pretended for a long time. And what was so interesting was that, that I remember confessing to my, to my, um, my, my relatives down in Virginia, my uh, cousin Patty, who's nine years older than me, known me since I was born. I mean, she was nine when I was born, so I've known her forever. And I confessed to her why I sort of lost communication because I was living with somebody and I, my mother wanted it to stay among the family, which meant the three of us. And she just looked at me and she said, oh, Johnny, we've known you've been gay since you were a little boy. Wow. It doesn't, such love. Doesn't that she, make you feel sad that you lost so much contact when she would have really understood you or she did understand yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. That was, yeah that's what's heartbreaking. Time, waste of time. And that's why I sort of, I guess, when it came time to just to, to stop, it, I just stopped. And I, but I still sometimes feel like uh, second rate because of it. What do you yeah, mean second been, rate? Well, it's because I'm, I'm different than the other boys. It was it was hard, especially when it got to junior high school and, and high school and stuff when you know I was uncomfortable. So but I found I found my strength in the theater. I I uh we 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 did a a Lilium, a, a the play called Lilium, which was the uh, carousel was based on that musical. And and you had re readings in the cafeteria, and I just read one little line. I thought I did it really well, but they didn't notice me. So I got on the crew to, to change the stage. It was platforms in the cafeteria. It was in the round. So people had to carry things on and off. And I got a, a black derby cap and a, and a black turtleneck and black pants. And I came out and started moving the furniture and people started laughing at me. So I don't know what I was doing, but I was behaving in a way I didn't say a word. But by the end of the show, I was getting big laughs. And I thought the teacher was going to be really, really mad at me. But she gave me the play, uh, the lead in the play the next year. <laughs> wow. I guess. And I could make people laugh. I had, I had a control. Something happened. And, 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 and they were, I was making them laugh. And, and they were laughing at me, enjoying themselves. And it felt so good. Especially probably because you were going through such a tough time. I know. You're know, hiding was, that this is a power. chance. Yeah. Right, right. I this could, is your power. I could be somebody else and they would appreciate that. Did you? But it was the yeah. me. I remember once, I, 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 Carol Kane was a good friend of mine. Is loved a good her, friend loved of mine. her. And she was, uh, um, 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 you know, the, bl the blonde, uh, the blonde girl from, from Terry Gar. Somehow, I, I got alone with Terry Gar in her house. You've never seen me. I, I felt so uncomfortable. Like I should be somebody that I should be some man here with Terry Gar in the house. And I was like this gay guy that didn't know what to say to her. <laughs> I would just made myself so uncomfortable. I make myself uncomfortable around Bernadette Peters. I, I have such a crush on her. And I saw her when she was in high school and one of the first things she did in New York. So, and, and I got to, um, to do a, uh, we did a TV movie together. So I got to play with her and I just would go, blah, 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 blah. And once we were all sitting around talking and, and, and she said, I have a sister. And I said, I'm an only child. And she said, oh, no wonder you're a little chatterbox. <laughs> <laughs> but I love her so much oh, that I man. get a little, uh, starstruck when i'm around her you still do the um the alzheimer walks obviously you couldn't do it this year this last year no no it, it got more and more complicated and i guess my dad's death further and further away so and the and the town harder and harder to get to yeah because i remember you used to do the alzheimer walks and we helped raise money and right yes we'd and sign stuff. And we did a whole we got in trouble actually because we did so many smallville things 
they they stopped. They they said no, you can't do that anymore. You can't uh, you can't raise money for one thing with a with a TV show or something. I really? Said, yeah, yeah. I didn't remember that. It stop. Yeah, that's weird. But but Tom donated his bike. Somebody bought his bike. We all made a quilt. Yeah. Big stuff. Yeah. 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 Because my grandfather just died. Uh, this year will be this November will be two years of Alzheimer's and his mother mm-hmm. died of Alzheimer's. So we always used to talk about that. So it was, it, was, it wasn't it, the virus, was it? No, no, it was Alzheimer's. Oh, he, he died before he died the November bef- right before the pandemic. Oh, I'm so glad my parents left us too. I would have hated to have. Lost oh yeah. That yeah. That's oh, the worst God. way to die. I'm glad. I'm glad my grandmother's vaccinated and she's playing poker again, Blanche and, and oh, West Palm Beach, and she's able to. Because I couldn't imagine her dying from the, during the I pandemic. Said your grandma's called Blanche. Yeah, she's Blanche, and my dog's <laughs> Blanche, and my dog is Irv, and my grandpa who died is Irv. So that's how I roll. That's how I roll. Okay. Well, listen, yeah. I, did you enjoy this talking to you? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! This was it. That's it. <laughs> oh, I thought we were gonna do it now. No, <laughs> this is. <laughs> <laughs> uh well listen maybe uh sometime you can have me over after the pandemic we'll have a swim that'd be great you know because of the deck work on getting a, your vaccination michael yeah i'm going to i'm gonna it, get it in a week it'll, yeah it'll make everything uh easier listen i love you to death thank you for I allowing you me to thank you, you for this it was a lot of fun i love it i'm glad you did uh, it i'm leaving now okay Mwah. bye bye well that was grand I mean, that hair. That hair was <laughs> intense. And I just love him talking about sleeping with uh, Freddie Mercury. Yeah. And they just didn't say anything about it. Like, no, that's yeah. just, that's what we did. Yeah. Good day, sir. <laughs> that's it. Good day. I go, was he good in bed? I, I really don't remember. How could you not know? If I had sex with Barbara Streisand or something, I'd remember it. <laughs> no, I, guess, I mean, I think that's just the, that's the kind of night they were both looking for. They just sort of needed to. Uh... Yeah, what's wrong with that? Two That's two it. men, two human beings wanting to have some release and That's some it. fun. That's it. And they did. Mm-hmm. And we'll never know what would happen behind those doors. I mean, maybe Freddie Mercury talked about John Glover this whole time. Find me somebody to love. Find me, me somebody. somebody to. Are we going to get sued for that from YouTube? Christ. We'll be fine. Uh, thank you again for all the wishes uh, for Irv. I love you guys so dearly. Uh, remember to go to stageit.com and get your tickets for the Stage It show on April 24th, Saturday, 2 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we're going to be playing a lot of music. It's it's This one's for Irv, the Stage It. And, um, yeah, pretty uh, awesome dog. Uh, the best. Irv was the best. And um, also, if you want to get any merch, go to sunspin.com for hats, lunchboxes, shirts, all, the cool shirt I'm wearing right now. And the Inside of You online store for Smallville stuff, Inside of You stuff, tumblers, hats, lunchboxes. I have Smallville lunchboxes left, not many. But um, so grab one, grab something, grab hold tightly. And Patreon. If you want to join Patreon, join the Patreon family. Uh, we love you and I'd love to have you aboard. I always write a message after someone gets on there at patreon.com slash inside. Why don't I name the top patrons and call this one a day? Let's do it. Nancy D, Mary B, Leah S, Trisha F, Sarah V, Little Lisa, Yukiko, Jill E, Brian H, Lauren G, Nico P, Robin S, Jerry W, Robert B, Jason W, Apothean, Kristen K, Amelia O, Allison L, Lucas M, Raj C, Joshua D, Emily S, CJP, Samantha M, Jennifer N, Jackie P, Stacy L, Carly H, Jen S, Jamal F, Janelle B, Carrie B, Tabitha 272, not to be confused with. Tabitha 273. Ashley Ryan, Kimberly. L. E. e. Wow. <laughs> Messed it up. You really <laughs> fucked it up. Mikey, yeah. Marissa N, Eldon Supremo, Ramira, Beth B, Santiago M, Sarah F, Chad W, Liam P, Ray A, Maya P, Maisha. Maisha. C. Matt, yes, you're right. Maddie S, Kendrick F, Ashley E, Shannon D, Matt W, Belinda N, Kevin V, James R, Chris H, Osborne, Osborne, Osborne Dave H, Samantha B, Spider Man, Chase, Sheila, G, Ray, H, Tabitha, T, Misha, N, H. You're amazing, though. Damn it. Tom N, Suzanne B, Katie F, Liliana A, Michelle K, Hannah B, Michelle, Michael S. Mm-hmm. Talia M, Luke M, Andrew T, Betsy D, Claire M, Liz J, Laura L, Chad B, Rochelle E, Nathan E, Brandel. Don't forget Taylor K, Neil A, Marion, Meg K, Meg K, 
Janelle P. Travel. 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 Remember? Travel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Dan N. Jennifer J. Wayne M. Diane R. O. Jetta. O. Jetta. Jia. Lorraine G. Olga C. Corey M. Carrie H. Veronica K. Big Stevie W. Kendall T. Lindsay M. Carol D. Katie G. Sandy B. Angel M. Eric C. And Rhiannon C. Rhiannon C. I don't know what I would do without you guys. My Patreons rule. You are the reason the show really is rocking. Uh, there's a lot of love. I mean, thank you all the listeners today and especially those patrons who support uh, a little extra on the side. Um, I love you. It means the world to me. Um, and, uh, be good to yourselves and love those animals. Please love your animal. You never know how long they're going to be here and they already live such short lives. Um, from my house here in the Hollywood Hills, Hills, I'm Michael Rosenbaum and wave into the camera, Ryan. Hello. And, uh, Thank you for allowing me to be inside of each and every one of you guys have a fantastic week. Spread the word on the podcast and uh, uh, much love to you.